Hello and welcome back to Derivability. Here we're going to talk about some um, mechanical engineering again. Uh, angular momentum of a rigid body in planar motion. Okay, so um, I've recorded several other videos, uh, you might say, that lead up to this. Uh, one has to do with the uh, kinematics of a rigid body in planar motion. Okay, um, so we'll need that formula that I just put the star by. Okay, uh, also angular momentum is um, the, you might say, the moment of the linear momentum, uh, kind of an R cross P. Okay, so I'll put a little overline uh, on top of that. Okay, uh, we'll use the letter H for angular momentum. Okay, that varies from book to book. Uh, but I, I don't believe this is uncommon. All right. Uh, and on the left, you can see we have a fixed origin O. Uh, and then we have some point P in the rigid body. Okay, and then some mass element, M sub I. Uh, you can think of that as being point I. Okay, later we'll think of that as an infinitesimal mass dm. Okay, so if we find the angular momentum of this mass element about point P, Okay, that's what I put the little bracket over top of uh, h sub p of point i. Uh, that's r sub i p cross p sub i o, the linear momentum. Okay, well, we know that the linear momentum uh, is equal to m times v. Okay, with the appropriate subscripting, of course. All right. Okay, so let's uh, let's expand this out. Now uh, the mass is a scalar m sub i. It comes through the the vectors uh, as as a scalar multiple, and also through the cross products. Uh, so what I've got is r sub i p cross uh, each of these two terms for v sub i o. So let's just go ahead and do that distributive rule. So first, omega cross r sub i p, and then plus uh, distributive r sub i p cross v sub p o. Okay, now uh, if, if you're used to this sort of thing um, for you know, rigid body motion uh, in terms of like uh, forces and moments, uh, kinetic energies, other things, uh, it is not uncommon for us to run into this triple cross product, okay? Uh, and we often resolve that using what we call our back cab rule, all right? So, uh, in fact, I have a video on the so-called back cab rule, okay? What that means here is that uh, we're gonna take um, omega and then multiply that by the dot product r IP dot R I P and then minus R sub I P times the dot product R sub I P dot omega. Now for planar motions this second uh, scalar product here R dot omega is equal to zero because R is in the plane. It would have uh, ij unit vectors attached to that. And then omega is perpendicular to the plane. Okay, so we could write that as, as the magnitude omega times the k vector. Okay, so this we get to uh, just drop out. Okay, so that simplifies things um, in that first term at least. So what we have now is angular momentum h sub p of point i equals m sub i. Okay, then we're gonna have brackets, uh, omega. In fact, I don't even really need parentheses there because r dot r is just r sub i p squared. And then minus, I'm sorry, plus r sub i p cross v sub p o. Okay, now at this point, it's going to be appropriate to take the sum over all such mass elements i, uh, or integrate over, over all mass elements dm. 
Okay, so what we get from this is we get the angular momentum of the entire rigid body about our, our point P here, kind of an arbitrary point. Okay, equals, now omega is a constant for the whole rigid body. Otherwise, I'm going to distribute this m in. Really, it's a dm at this point. Uh, so I have to integrate r sub i p squared dm, or dm sub i. Okay, and then plus. Okay, then I'm going to have the integral of r sub i p dm sub i. Now that thing is still a vector, and then that has to be crossed into v sub p o. Okay. Uh, now again, this whole scheme of, of ver these various derivations, uh, we, you know, you might notice some, uh, some common themes here. Okay, first we have this integral of r squared dm. Okay, these r's are being measured from point p. So this is the moment of inertia of our rigid body about point p. Okay, also this integration of r dm is the total mass and then times the position of the centroid measured from point P. Okay. Alright, now it uh, looks like we need some clean space here so let's create some clean space and then uh, we'll pick this up uh, near the top here in just a moment. Okay, well back to work now. Okay, so I've uh, rewritten our equation up top um, in terms of, of the formulas that we really have, I sub P, uh, among others. Okay, now P is just an arbitrary point here. Now what we would really like is to express this in terms of uh, the centroid, G. Okay, um, and again, I haven't drawn the centroid in this, in this picture over here. You know, it, 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 we don't really need it for geometric purposes. It doesn't, it doesn't matter where it is, or really the center of mass. Okay, even though it doesn't look like it's drawn at the center of mass of that rigid body, um, I, I don't even need to draw that in the picture, as long as we can, uh, we can do the math with that. Okay, so um, maybe the point that we've chosen P, maybe P really is just the centroid, okay? So if P equals the centroid, center of mass, then what I have here is H sub G equals I sub G times omega, uh, and that's all. Because if I replace this P with a G, I have R sub G G, that really means the position of the centroid measured from the centroid, well, that's equal to zero, okay? So if P is equal to G, then we have this nice formula, okay, which you, you may have halfway been expecting, um, if, if you recall some um, uh, rotational motion from first semester physics, maybe, uh, before you've gotten to this, this level of uh, engineering. Okay, angular momentum equals I times omega. Okay, now that's true if, for instance, you're talking about the center of mass, G, okay? But what if you're not talking about the center of mass? Okay. We'd still like to express, as I, I wrote in, down in red, we'd still like to express all of that in terms of things that reference the center of mass. You might say the most important point uh, in that rigid body, that single as a single point. Okay. Okay, so otherwise, let's just note okay, that I sub P is related to I sub G using the parallel axis theorem. Okay, and you'll recall that parallel axis term is an MR squared or an MD squared, however you notate that, uh, where that squared distance is the distance between P and G. Okay, uh, so in the next step we'll replace I sub P uh, with that. Okay, now otherwise we need to use some kinematics to replace this velocity PO with something in terms of, of velocity GO. Okay, so let's come back down here. Okay, I'm going to write a kinematics formula. Let's 
excuse me there, uh, very similar to what I did at the beginning. I'm going to write V sub PO equals omega cross R sub PG plus velocity GO. Okay, so this velocity GO, that's one of the things we're looking for. <coughs> and this um, position vector PG, uh, kind of also what we're looking for. Okay, up here we have a GP. Here we have a PG. Okay, well that's easy to fix. I can reverse the um, subscripts by also introducing this uh, negative sign out front. Okay, so R sub GP now instead of PG, and then a negative out front. Now this velocity PO is involved in this cross product. Okay, so let's talk about this cross product here again. Very similar to what we did earlier. So R sub GP cross V sub PO. Okay, well that's R sub GP cross negative omega cross R sub GP plus R sub GP cross V sub GO. Okay. All right, now apart from this negative sign in this term that I've just underlined, okay, this is going to end up being uh, very similar, end up uh, turning out very similar to what we did with the back cab rule uh, on the previous screen. Okay, so this is really the same as omega vector r sub gp squared. Okay, of course there's that negative sign. Okay. All right, so if I tally these two terms up here, minus omega vector r sub gp squared plus the vector r sub gp cross v sub go. Okay, and then that is going to go in place of this wavy underline there. Okay, so it looks like we need um, a, a little more clean space before we, we finish up, but uh, we're just about there. Okay, so we've got some clean space now. Let's, uh, let's finish this up. Okay, so uh, we use the parallel axis theorem to replace I sub P with I sub G plus M R sub G P squared. And then we used some kinematics uh, plus a, a, a back cab identity to replace this cross product with minus omega r sub g p squared plus r sub g p cross v sub g o. Okay. All right. Now. I'm going to kind of skip half a step here and, and uh, prevail upon you to, to kind of see what's going on. Okay, once I distribute through both of these sets of parentheses, I've got two terms here, underlined in red, uh, that are going to cancel. Okay, each of them is equal to an m times r sub gp squared times the omega vector. Uh, one is positive and one is negative. Okay, so here's what we have left. We have H sub P equals I sub G omega plus M times R sub G P cross V sub G O. Now we could kind of leave it here, okay, but I'm going to do one more thing. Uh, the M could be combined with V sub G O and this is the linear momentum of our object uh, expressed at its center of mass, uh, P sub G O. Okay, so we could write H sub P equals I sub G omega plus R sub G P cross momentum P sub G O. Okay, this last term represents the moment of the linear momentum P uh, about point P, capital P.
okay? And of course, uh, the, the single point at which we can think of that momentum uh, being there is, is uh, the centroid point G. Okay? Now, something else we can do uh, if we happen to have a um, fixed point P, okay, so if P is a fixed point, okay, uh, then we can talk about the angular momentum of P uh, as I sub P times omega. And what this does is this combines the two terms using the parallel axis theorem. Okay. Or we could talk about the instantaneous center of zero velocity uh, as kind of an instantaneous fixed point. Okay, if that's what you happen to be interested in. Okay, uh, we can do the same thing. It uses the, the derivation is the same, it uses the parallel axis theorem. Okay. All right, well, I think that is a good place for us to uh, pause for now. Okay. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's been uh, helpful in your studies. Um, share the channel, Derivability, with some friends, classmates. Uh, love for you to subscribe to my channel. Okay, hopefully doing, be doing some other uh, helpful things for your uh, studies in the future. Thanks again for uh, sticking around here, and uh, we'll see you the next time.